Hey YouTube, Maple Anglican here. This video is part of a series on Anglicanism and is designed to educate other Protestants on why exactly we are Catholics and yet Protestant. So without further ado, Anglicanism for Protestants, what are ministers? Now some of you might think, wait, my church has ministers too, and you would be correct. However, like Roman Catholics and Eastern Orthodox Christians, our ministers are part of something called apostolic succession and are ordained into hierarchical orders. The doctrine of apostolic succession holds that the authority and ability to practice the sacraments that was given by Jesus Christ to the apostles has been continually passed on and is still present today. Anglicans, along with some groups of Lutherans, maintain the apostolic succession while most other Protestants did not. It is generally held that there are three orders of minister in apostolic succession, but this has been debated. The first order of ministry is that of deacon. The word deacon comes from the Greek dikanos, which means servant or messenger. In an Anglican service, they will generally read the gospel, prepare the altar for the celebration of Holy Communion, and will give the dismissal at the end of the service. The majority of deacons are themselves in training to move into higher ministry and are called transitional deacons. However, some choose to serve in this role permanently and are called vocational deacons. The next order of ministry is that of the priests. The word priest comes from the Greek presbyteros, which means elder. A priest's ministry is primarily concerned with administering the sacraments to those under his or her care. Primarily baptism, by which we are cleansed of original sin and become part of the body of the church, and the Eucharist, by which we receive the body and blood of Christ. Priests will also administer confession, by which we are absolved of our sins that we have committed, anointing of the sick, by which the gravely ill can seek penance, and acts as the church's witness to holy matrimony, by which a man and woman are joined together in a lifelong bond. Those wishing to become priests will attend a type of school called a seminary and will be first ordained a deacon for about one year before finally being ordained a priest. The final and highest order is that of bishop. The word bishop comes from the Greek episkopos, which means overseer or supervisor. A bishop's ministry is the oversight of the priests and deacons under his or her care in a territory called a diocese. Like priests, they are able to minister the sacraments, however, are able to to confer two more that priests do not, ordination or holy orders by which a person is made a minister, and confirmation by which we receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and our bond with God is made more perfect. Unlike with deacons and priests, it is generally necessary to have more than one bishop present to ensure that apostolic succession is maintained. This is also maintained by Roman Catholics and Orthodox Christians. Some bishops have special titles. A metropolitan is a bishop whose oversight of other bishops and is usually ranked as an arch or chief bishop. A primate is a bishop who themselves has oversight over a national or regional church. However, metropolitans and primates are still bishops and do not receive any other form of ordination beyond that of bishop. Bishops are elected to their position, but the method varies. Outside of England, this is usually done by a two-thirds majority of the clergy and representatives of the laity from throughout the diocese. One major difference between Anglicans and other Catholics is in terms of marriage of clergy. In Roman Catholicism, it is generally held that most clergy are expected to be celibate, but some exceptions are allowed. Orthodoxy and Eastern Catholicism allow married men to become deacons or priests, but those who are already ordained are not allowed to marry unless leaving the ministry. As well, the office of bishop is restricted to monks alone. Anglicanism, like most Protestants, does not place any restrictions on whether its clergy can marry or if married persons be can become ministers. As well, like many Protestants, we are divided on the issue of ordination of women to ministry, which remains a hot topic to this day within the Anglican Communion. So, please rate, please comment respectfully, and please subscribe. And thanks for watching.